welcome to Community Media, a podcast about all things community media. I'm here with our third guest, Dana Healy, Executive Director of the Danvers Community Access Television Station. Welcome, Dana. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Good, good. Well, it's great to have you. Uh, I thought we would talk about uh, what's going on in our region and what's going on in cable access TV, community media, since we're both trying our best to uh, turn these stations into uh, something relevant for the future. Sure. Well, there's a lot going on. So <laughs> there is, yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, I've been in community media for 15 years now. Have you? Yeah. So, and I have seen a lot of the landscape change. You know, we have our old school views and in, we are needing to move forward and update how we view community media and its purpose and its longevity throughout, you know, our careers and for everybody else that gets to benefit from it. So, I mean, but the biggest challenges that we're facing right now is the uncertainty of where we're going techno with technology and as well as franchises and franch yep. licenses. Yep. So you just went through a license we negotiation. Did, yeah. So where, where are you, by the way? Did you go through one recently? Got one coming up? I forget. We're right now in community needs assessment with, oh. um, and we're just finishing that up right now. And we're, our deadline for the Verizon contract is December 2019. So I got a little more time. Okay. Yeah. 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 So a lot could change between now and then. Yes. Your fingers crossed. Well, know. that's the that's the challenge, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. technology. So we have this whole plan on everything that we need right now, but how do we future cast that? Yeah. So how do we put that down in language on what we're going to need? And a lot of licenses are ten years. My Comcast license, a Verizon license was ten years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are shorter now, but um technology changes in in months yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you're right we just went through ours we're just uh wrapping up the second of four contracts um we got essex locked in gloucester's almost done and the other two are uh should be done in a month or two so you know it was a long process it took took uh close to two years um so pretty much on the schedule you're on um and it was a lot it was a lot of uh like it's like herding cats. <laughs> well, yours is probably so much more complicated because you have your regional. You have more than one community, so I'm assuming you have license agreements with each town. We do, yeah. yeah. So it, you know, it had had its uh, pluses and minuses. You know, it was at times difficult to get consensus, but sometimes um, it made it easier if you had someone who wasn't quite on the same page, but the other three communities were was a little easier to get everybody there you know you kind of could could use that leverage once in a while because um, for the most part everyone saw it similarly that we needed a good deal and we needed to have a robust community media center for the next 10 years and it was possible that this was our last contract so we really had to make sure that we got better terms which thankfully we did you know so we're going to uh, we're going to be set to grow pretty significantly pretty soon in the next you know six months or so that's awesome i'm really happy for you guys that's Thanks. a really good win yeah it's a big one it's a big <laughs> one it's it's going to be fun it's going to help us kind of navigate the near future and try some things with programming and new hires and that sort of stuff so um we're, we're coming out of a very lean period into a kind of an exciting one where we can make some moves you know so um just to back up a little bit you have a little bit of experience here right weren't you were you on the board here uh, yes, I was for a short stint. Tell me about that. <laughs> Tell me about that. I'm curious. So um, I think it was close to seven years ago now. Maybe maybe not quite that long. before my time. Yeah, so it was uh, a little before your time. Um, and I left, and then I think you came on probably six months after that. Oh, really? Yeah, so uh, just missed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I moved, so that's why I wasn't in the, the area anymore. I just felt like I couldn't serve as well as some other people could. Um, but I, I really do love Gloucester. I love Cape Ann. And the arts that you have here is, is something that I was so entrenched in when I was living here. And I really enjoyed that you know, community aspect. So, and one thing about your board is they're so active. They're wonderful. So, <laughs> so they're very active in everything, and it's it's really nice to see boards like that. 
They are. They are. They're great. Um, why community media? You've been in it for 15 years. You're passionate about it. I know that from working with you. So what is it that, what, what pulls you in that direction? I really love rooting for the little guy. So a lot of time, I mean, I was always driven to do creative things in media production, create television shows and movies. And I mean, I've been doing that since I was in high school. Um, but it was the idea of really having your voice heard and not getting it lost in a sea of commercials and a sea of agenda-driven programming, like on um, big media platforms. So you mentioned programming. Tell me about some of the programming going on at DCAT. What do you guys have to do? Anything interesting? Well, we're very um, uh, children-focused right now. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. I mean, I, sh I shouldn't say just children. They probably wouldn't like me saying that. <laughs> um, but young teens and um, preteens. So they're really active and creative in creating cooking shows, talk shows, sports shows. Um, there's probably a base of 15 of them that are just constantly producing something. We have one kid that just came out with two new studio ideas and he's just doing behind the scenes on all the other shows that are happening. I'm like, that's great. So we got a show going on, and we got a kid coming around with a camera. So, I mean, that's that's awesome. That and, is great. Yeah, and he's learning about the process, uh, you know, documentary style rather than just studio. How are you engaging with those young people? That's not something that we do very well. So we have um, been very lucky to have such a good um, uh, flow of uh, children. Uh, to come in and I really think it's because of our after-school program so we offer five sessions of an after-school program that's free um, with the model that funnels kids into DCAT so at the end of their five-week session we have a pizza party which is all sponsored by underwriters to provide the pizza for free for us which thank you for that um, so we uh, have invite them in to watch their the videos that they created, and then they get that bug, that media production bug, and they want to do more. They want to do animation. They want to create viral videos. They want to do their own studio shows. And once they get to have a tour of the facilities, they can see so much more that what they can do. So we retain probably sixty percent of the kids. Wow. Yeah. That's that's a that's a nice percentage. I'm going to steal that if you don't mind. Oh, please do. That. Yes. <laughs> We're always trying to figure out how to connect with the kids, and you know we have this issue of getting them here. Mm -hmm. You know, we're thinking about maybe trying to go there, but it's always a resource question, and um, and then so trying to engage them on a level there where they're interested. You know, is it is it mobile stuff? Is it green screen stuff? You know, is it social media content? What is it that that they're going to be into? Um, and uh, so hopefully we can do a better job of that going forward when we when we evolve a bit. It is, and it's a lot of it's growing pains. But our education coordinator, uh, Ben Thomas, has been fantastic at engaging the students and revamping all the curriculum. But the biggest thing is going to them. We use a lot of iPads, a lot of GoPros, a lot of very mobile devices that make it easy uh, for the kids to create. That's great. What? Tell me about DCAT. Um, where are you located? How many people? What are those people doing? That sort of stuff. Sure, we're 3,000 square feet right in the downtown Danvers. Um, we can see the town hall from our studio. Um, we have four full-time, two part-time, and then we have some videographers that you know do a couple hours here and there for meetings. Our membership base is 275 active members, which we're really happy about that. That's the highest we've ever had. Um, and our focus right now is creating a positive customer experience for those particular members. I say customer experience like we're a business, but I really think it's important that even being a nonprofit that we do run ourselves like a successful business and that's maintaining positive relationships with all these members. Absolutely. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Um, you and I are both on the board of Mass Access, which for anyone who doesn't know is a community media advocacy group, massaccess.org. People should check that out. Um, you know, that. why don't you describe that board a little bit and uh, talk about some of the work that's going on there? Because I want to kind of segue into how community media is changing a little bit. Sure, yeah. It's an awesome board. We all work very well together, um, all professionals in the community media environment. 
Uh, right now, we're really focusing on lobbying for HD channels, for community media to stay relevant with um, and to compete with other um, large corporations by having our own HD channels for each station. Um, I personally do think that the larger um, groups, larger multi-platform uh, video distributors are pushing us down because, you know, we're just a little zip they want to pop. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and it's our responsibility to fight for the rights that we uh, need, you know? So, and that's what we're, where we come in with um, lobbying for the things like HD channels and to be included on the programming guide. These are simple things. They're not, you know, we're not reaching for the stars here. We just need to be treated just like other channels. Absolutely, and also making sure that uh, we're considered when things start moving toward IP. You know, I saw the other day that Comcast is coming out with an over-the-top offering. Some of those sort of larger industry changes that affect us directly because we get this percentage of cable subscription revenue. Um, keeping, an eye, keeping an eye out for that sort of thing. How do you see, uh, how do you see those things going? Do you see these over-the-top offerings, cord cutting, being a sort of significant issue for us? I really don't believe cord cutting is going to be an issue. Um, I really? know a lot. Of, I know a lot of people are are worried about this, and their their fear is is everybody is going to move towards that direction. And I I think our primary viewers are older. So, and the idea of cord cutting terrifies them. <laughs> um, the internet and being able to stream and use Hulu and Netflix and things like that, um, that is uh, difficult for that older generation. So yeah, our millennials coming up now um, are a little more, they're all internet-based, mobile, internet. But what I'm hoping with mass access is once we get the lock on these HD channels, then we can start uh, lobbying for a percentage of the uh, franchise fee coming from internet services. So, I mean, Comcast and Verizon and RCN, they're gonna get their slice of the pie no matter what. Um, whether it comes from the cable franchise fees or internet, they're gonna get it wherever they can. But I think that that would be a great next hurdle for us to take. All right, so it's not, not that things aren't going over the top and IP base, it's just that we're gonna go get a, our piece. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just just I mean, clarifying. <laughs> um, so what are we gonna do about the fact that our audience is older? You know, you, you're doing a pretty good job of engaging young kids, but we haven't talked about engaging millennials or, or other generations. You know, what are we going to do about that? Um, well, over at, at DCAT, we um, we developed a mobile app. Um, really? Yeah. So we, we use that to communicate and to engage. Um, it's coming up with uh, ways, low-cost ways, that engage the younger generations. And everybody's using these smartphones. Um, a website's not going to cut it anymore. You need to have more than just that. So I do think that has a big part of it. But it's also diversifying what we are. So we're, yeah, we're a TV station, but we should also be community media center. Right now, millennials are the biggest users of public libraries. So they're they're. Uh, Where'd you get that stat? Yeah, that yeah, really? that, that just came out from get the out yeah National Library Resource of America or something like that. Um, I will find the actual uh, actual reference for you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I want to see that. Uh, <laughs> but millennials are the they you know it's throwback. It's you know it's uh, free resources and the libraries have all sorts of awesome resources. So by taking a page out of their book, you know, bad pun. Um, we need to be able to uh, diversify what we can offer. And I think that's computers, that's tablets, that's um, mobile presentation centers. Um, I had somebody come in, they're looking for still photography flash setups. So by offering more things like that, I think we can still maintain um, a piece of the pie. 
I agree. I think that's really important. It's it's my opinion that our value is really narrowing. You know, we used to be this uh, place where you could go, one of the only places where you could go and make television, distribute television. Um, but now with 4K phones in your pocket, video recorders in your pocket, and distribution on YouTube and those sorts of things, you know, the old model doesn't really stand up very well anymore. And we've really got to think about new initiatives, new programs, new services that address that and create new value for relevancy going forward. So here at Cape Ann TV, what kind of services do you think that your facility would provide to mm, increase that? So Sweet Spots Production Services, Video Work for Hire, that's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. You know, we're doing that kind of work anyway, but the, we could be doing a lot more event coverage and promos and PSAs and commercials and those sorts of things. That's, that's an easy one. But I see that kind of midstream between marketing and branding and social media distribution. Uh, I think those are areas that we could start to move into because we're already creating the content and so distributing it in current ways is a sort of natural next step. So, um, you know, taking over and managing social media accounts for organizations because we're already there at the events, at the meetings. Um, and so carving that, that content up in new ways and distributing it on their social media accounts and managing that for them, maybe on a monthly uh, sort of subscription model uh, and then upstream, you know, the marketing and branding. So many organizations, municipalities, businesses are rebranding and need new websites, um, new messaging. And then so it's, you know, the branding and the messaging and then the content creation and then the distribution of that content. I see that all as one sort of holistic approach for us. Um, so we're looking into that kind of thing. Um, original content, you know, sort of an extension of what we're doing, you know, coming up with concepts ourselves, developing those, and then marketing those for sponsorship, syndication, things like that. Um, yeah, those are some of the some of the things that we're thinking about. So that's fantastic. And here's dirty word, watch out, monetizing. So what are you thinking? Like, all right, you're going to take over these social media accounts, and you're going to do it on a subscription basis. So a lot of our colleagues are scared about this about offering services for money in return. Mm -hmm. So what is your view on that school of thought? Make sure that you take care of the PEG mission first and foremost. Don't look away from that, you know, make that still the primary mission. You know, I see the unrelated business income um, and the monetization as a way to support the primary mission of PEG, you know, if we want to be around for 30 years and not 10, you know, if I don't want to be looking for work when my kids are in middle school, I need to make sure that I can fund this place outside of the Comcast revenue 10 years from now. And so it's a clear necessity. You know, if we're, we get like 95 plus percent of our revenue from Comcast, if that were to go away, so would we. So we can't not figure out how to make, at a minimum, what we're making today on the side. So it's just clear-cut survival, in my opinion. And you have to figure out how to make that happen. And it's not going to be any one thing. It's not going to just be underwriting. It's not going to just be production services. It's not going to just be grants. It's going to be aggressive approaches in all of those areas, I think, to get anywhere near what you really need to be. So. I think um, I think it's just pure survival, making sure that you're doing it legally, respecting the, the sort of core mission, you know, but you could always spin off a for-profit arm, you know, that there's precedent for that, you know. The, the um, organizations in California that have gone to statewide franchising and lost their funding, they're writing 15 grants a year, you know. A lot of the stations in Massachusetts that are comfortable with their cable funding aren't doing those sorts of things that our colleagues running other nonprofits are doing all the time, you know. So that's just kind of how I look at it, you know. Get serious about the revenue. Stop worrying or you're gonna you're gonna go away. <laughs> so do you think I 
I don't believe that our colleagues in Massachusetts uh, are worried about the franchise fees disappearing, or else I feel like there would be a lot more of these innovative thoughts that you, I mean, the social media, the, you know, the underwriting alone and production services, um, uh, equipment rentals. Mm -hmm. I feel like there would be more of that happening. But I feel like within the last six months, I've really heard a lot of buzz on alternative revenue sources and that people are just starting to really kind of put their little toe in um, to kind of come up with ideas. Why do you think that's happening now and it hasn't happened, you know, two years ago, three years ago? I mean, I think the trends and the, you know, global trends, national trends are picking up speed. You know, you're seeing over the top offerings mm -hmm. all the time now. Cord cutting is picking up speed. Um, you know, statewide franchising has happened across the country. So, you know, and, and it's no different than any other industry. If you don't innovate, you know, that's the kiss of death. So yeah. um, as we see fewer and fewer members, you know, um, and these national trends, it's like, okay, we need to reevaluate the whole model. You know, we need to turn this place into something relevant for the future, and we need to turn it into a revenue-generating machine. That's how I see it. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, so, you know, part of why we're having this podcast is to talk about these kinds of things. It's, it's, there's yeah, a lot it's of transition great. happening. New leadership, you know, mass access is almost exclusively new leadership, you know. Yes, yep. And what do we, we have, have seven or eight board members? Is it seven or eight? Something like that. And yeah. And um, probably everyone's. We definitely Almost need like everyone's new to the board. Like 12, 13, 14. Yeah, <laughs> That's the amount of work that we Volunteer all do. Volunteer boards are no joke. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Working boards. <laughs> yeah. So do you I mean, do you do you see things similarly on the on the uh, survival front? Yes, especially recently. Um, alternative revenue sources and a lot of it is what I've been doing personally is going through and and cutting the fat on my operations um, but it's not just reducing your operations you have to increase your revenue and um, figure out different ways to do that so we have a pretty good underwriting um, program that I developed about three years ago now so we've gotten some good traction with that but I want to start pushing that forward to production services it just seems like a natural next step like we have all these businesses that want to be part and work with us um okay let's do your you know commercials or public service amount announcements or um you don't have time to do a series we'll we'll do it for you so i'm starting to dabble within that process the um things that i wrestle with is the return on investment of time so you have your overhead and you have your coordinators and plus you have your ed working on a project and once you add up all the the finance of finances of that what is the cost benefit like is it valued as much as all that time and effort that you put into so that's the part i'm wrestling with right now mm -hmm. so what's your experience with that well i'm trying to make every program pay for itself at a minimum mm -hmm. you know at least cover the costs otherwise get get better at saying no yeah you know um, I think for a long time people and organizations got used to us doing things for free or cheap super cheap mm -hmm. uh, and we got better at saying no and and valuing our value yeah you know feeling like okay we I mean you got to look at the numbers and just say wow this is expensive to do this stuff you know for us to come out and shoot an event is expensive you know it takes some of my time it takes our staff time it takes equipment rentals that can't go somewhere else then there's post time and people forget about that it's one of the heaviest lifting involved and people don't think about that um you know and and people always make the argument well it's great content for you guys well great lots of stuff is great content for us but you know this is a business and we need to run it accordingly and so things need to be sponsored or paid for uh in order for us to do them now or we just don't do them yeah, and, and I think you've really hit the nail on the head by learning how to say no and valuing what we are and the services that we do provide. And that's the, the transition from, okay, yeah, no, I'll do all your events yeah, to we'll like, uh, no, it's going to cost X amount. Here's the quote for it. Well, 
what? What do you mean? Yeah. I have to pay you. <laughs> yeah. It's still dirt cheap, but people look at you like, wait, what? It's not, not free? It's not a handout? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, you get a lot of that the first time around, that balking at, oh, my God, this is three times what it used to cost or whatever. But, you know, we're, yeah. we're standing firm on that because it's still just covering our costs. We're really not making much money on it. I mean, you know, to make money on a full day shoot and edit, you're going to charge some yeah. serious money. It's pretty substantial. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we can be competitive because we don't have to live and die by it. We have this other funding, but, mm -hmm. you know, that's our competitive advantage. We can charge low rates, but we've got to charge the rates. Yeah, you've got to charge enough to actually be worth being there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So that we can be there 15 years from now. Yes. You know, otherwise we'll be able to do this for 10 and we'll call it. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we're not going to be able to get to everything I wanted to today, but let's talk a little bit about distribution. How do you see that changing? You know, if we've been all TV for a long time. Now there's on demand on the web. But talk about that. How's that changing? Are you going social? Um, well, specifically for DCAT, yeah. um, we do a lot of PEG Media. We do a lot of Telview Connect. We, um, we don't see a lot of the DVD bicycling, as we used to call, where producers would pick up and drop off DVDs. Um, we try to discourage that as much as possible. Uh, it, I think a marketplace for some bigger server pickup drop off of different files, video files is is necessary. I think we need something like personally, certain interfaces aren't my favorite. And um, not to get into specifics Name on which names. ones. <laughs> um, so I love you all equally. <laughs> um, but I definitely think it's it's something that us community media, media centers need. We, we need something more accessible in transferring files. Are you doing any content specifically for social media? Um, what we do is uh, every event or mostly events that we cover, we create a 30 second highlight of that particular event. Mm -hmm. We usually do that when we have interns, we have a little more hands on deck. Um, but we just started doing that probably three months ago, and it's super well received. So our Facebook reach now, like a post, gets about 4,300 uh, impressions, which I think is pretty good. Um, it's good that you know that. Yeah, I just did all our, our uh, stats yesterday, so this is all <laughs> fresh up here. Because <laughs> uh, we have our annual meeting coming up, so I have to have that all ready. But um, so I think that... Social media is a definite. We need to definitely move forward. I particularly like Facebook more than other platforms, but Twitter is still very valid and useful in a lot of a lot of places. So, mm -hmm. oh, what platforms do you use here? Uh, same. We have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, and building a LinkedIn strategy. And um, and I'd like to get into well, at least look at. Uh, I think we're looking at. Pinterest and Tumblr and Snapchat and some others to see if there's any opportunity there. It's not clear to me at this time, but talking with some people who understand that better than me. Yeah. I'm not a huge social media guy, but, but you know, so I outsource to smarter people in that area. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I think we need to go where the eyeballs are, you know, and everything is on social and on your phone. Yes. So we need to be there mm -hmm. uh, too. Um, well, why don't we wrap up there, Dan? Well, Lastly, I just want to ask you, how are you doing looking at this negotiation going forward? Are you feeling good about it? Are you getting the community support you need? Are you feeling like you're in good shape? Yeah, you know, like this community needs assessment that we just did was uh, heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. And to make it even heavier, I was on maternity leave for oh. yeah a few months of it. So um, my staff did a fantastic job while I was gone. Um, but it was a lot, a lot of work. So now it's the informing everybody of the findings. So we have a meeting coming up September 26th where we're gonna do that with uh, the cable committee and the board of selectmen and our my own board as well, um, as well as managers of the town. So we're really excited about that and we do feel like we have support of the town and I'm really happy that um, they are so supportive of community media because the residents are, of Dan Danvers residents love community media. I mean, they are just diehards for freedom of speech, so. That's really lucky, yeah. that's great. 
Well, Danvers is lucky to have you. I know you're moving and shaking over there and doing a great job by that, by that town. Town? City? Yeah, it's a town. town. Yeah. yeah, it should be legally a city, but they really like the town yeah. of, you know, board of selectmen voting. Gives Seems them, like a city. Yeah, it gives them more control. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, Dana, thank you for joining us. It was, uh, it was great and insightful to talk with you, and uh, we'll do this again. Yeah, this is great. Thanks for having me. Awesome. See ya.